Hi, I'm Anthony. Today, I'm gonna to answer a question that I have been receiving a few times by subscribers and friends alike. Um, I've been asked, when I scrap computers, what do I keep and why? So today, um, we're gonna to talk about uh, RAM. We're gonna talk about the different components of RAM and what they have by way of recoverable metals and, um, and why I keep it. So um, let's dive right in and uh, I'll show you what I do. So what we have are two typical standard types of RAM in modern computers. Um, the laptop RAM is gonna be smaller than desktop RAM. Um, most RAM is gonna be about the same. Um, they're gonna have gold pins and the gold pins are about the same length. Some older style equipment, such as an old server that I'm recently tearing apart, have gold fingers that are single-sided or even some that are double-sided. So I'm tearing apart an old server and uh, you'll see that the gold pins on, on these, these boards are much bigger. Um, they're longer, they're thicker, and they peel off leaving leaving nothing on the board itself, but the gold is typically used to um, reinforce or to coat copper or nickel or some other conductive material that will be used throughout the rest of the board. So a lot of people like going after these gold fingers because they're easy to work with, they're easy to see. So we'll set these off to the side because these are not from RAM and that's not really what we're doing today. So what I look for when I'm processing RAM are the gold fingers, which you will definitely see, and the chips. Some chips have legs and are surface mount. That means that they don't poke through. You got the different style of chips as well. So, there we go. There's a good double-sided BGA chip. And here is a double-sided um, SD. This is actually DDR1, I believe. Yep, this is DDR1. But this stuff will have uh, the surface mount with some solder, uh, where you can either peel them off or heat them off, it doesn't matter. I like to peel these ones off because it's just easy to do. So that's a quick overview of the two different types of RAM that I'm typically gonna work with. But here, let's go through how to process each one and we'll call it good there. First thing first. People who buy the RAM fingers do not want to buy the solder that these small resistors and these small MLCCs are connected with. Um, on double-sided, you'll have to be careful because those will be on both sides. Whereas a single-sided, this one's completely flush. There's nothing at all attached to the backside here. They still have the gold markings where the IC chips would mount. They have the gold fingers because the slots are double-sided, but um, you won't have to worry about a whole lot on this side. But as you're trimming the fingers, you want to do your best not to clip any of that solder or you'll, you'll have issues when you're processing for the gold recovery on this. Now those, um, the solder and those resistors can contain small amounts of silver, um, but that all depends on a lot of things. And since I'm not a pro at that, I don't, I don't collect it. I do my best to avoid it. So there, there is no solder at all. I did not clip any of those, those um, resistors and those MLCCs that are present there. You'll see that when you do it with the snips, it tends to make it torque a little bit and to get this nice twist. Um, but clear these out of the way. I have quite a few to process. But you'll see, I make a collection in in this in this little bin right here of all the close cut fingers. Now, some of these, like this, came from a power supply. This came from a expansion slot 
card of some sort, whether it be a sound card, a video card, or something else, it didn't matter. These, I clip off by tearing them. Well, that one I clipped, but, but typically I just rip them off with pliers. I use my channel locks and I can pull those off, grab them like so and pull. But on RAM, with these resistors so close to the fingers, you'll almost always get some. And it's so destructive to the, to the, to the board with these, with these, uh, these IC chips so close. I tried to not do that with the pliers because it makes, it makes it more difficult to get these off later. Um, so all around when I do RAM, I use the snips. Um, it's, it's just easier. Now they tend to go flying off if you clip all the way to the end. So when I get to like the last few millimeters, I just pull up and it lets go. Otherwise they go flying and then I have to go hunt for them and which isn't hard to do, but it's just something else that I can avoid. Okay. So once you have the gold fingers off, you'll notice that there is still gold and you can do stuff with that later, but you'll have to process that with the, with these pieces still on with these little resistors down here. So that has to go through a different process because you'll have tin and other things that you'll have mess up your, your refining process. So we'll ignore that for now. So I use a wood chisel to take these off. It's really easy. I put on an old pair of work gloves for this because this step can hurt me more than I'd like it to. So I put my gloves on and I put this in the palm of my hand because I'm going to basically be pulling into my hand and I don't want to, to gouge my hand. So all I do is I take the sharp cornered edge of the of the chisel and I set it in on the pins. Now this will only work on the pins. This is not how I process the BGAs. I'll show you that in just a minute. So I put that sharp edge on the first set of pins and just pull. You push in and pull. You do it two or three times and then they pop up. You see how it popped up right there? Makes it really easy. I do that across the whole row. You get the point. But once, once I get through the whole row, I use either alligator or needle nose pliers of some sort. And they're really flexible. You can twist them off or you can wiggle them off. I find it easiest just to grab the whole thing across the whole surface and just twist. And it comes off with a little bit of prying sometimes, but you can see it's really easy to, to pull these things off. So that's how I process the, the IC chips that have the legs exposed. And really you can, you can wiggle them off. You don't need the pliers. It's just an extra thing that makes it a little bit faster. Now it leaves those legs on here. They're still soldered on, which means that they'll be sharp. So as you're working, be careful not to cut yourself, but that's how I process the SD RAM that have the legs on the chips. When I have a whole collection of these, I like to keep them together and not mix my IC chips because the different style of IC chips have a different value per, per kilogram. Um, I don't know all the numbers off the top of my head, but you'll get um, a little lower price for these style RAM chips than you would the style that comes off your BGAs. They have a higher concentration or a higher density of gold bond wires inside. So we'll go through, we'll go through that in just a second. But that again is how I process those. Set that off to the side, we will move on to BGAs. Now your BGAs are, it stands for ball grid array. If you look closely, like this is a great example right here. If you look closely, you can see that the solder pins are on the bottom and not along the edges. These balls, because they are balls, when they are 
manufactured. They are balls that when you heat up the solder, you, you set it down on the board, whatever it'll be, you set it on, you heat it up, the solder melts, and then it's in place. Like these are already in place, right? So um, that's called a ball grid array or BGA. There's all sorts of different BGAs. Um, some are much more valuable than others, but in general, we are talking about the RAM BGAs. I've seen all sorts of different strategies to taking these off. And to be totally honest, um, most of them make me cringe. Like prying them off, you shatter these real fast. And then you end up with the, the black epoxy pieces flying everywhere. And, and to be totally honest, that's where the value is. You don't want these breaking apart and flying everywhere. So people who bend the, the chips, you know, whatever. I mean, you could get them off by bending. You can get them off by prying. But I have found that I've broken way more chips by bending, prying, or just brute forcing these things off. I use a heat gun. So to do the, the BGA chip removal, I use this, this Wagner heat gun. Um, it's... It was pretty inexpensive on Amazon and I have been very happy with it. I basically heat really close proximity on low at first and then I move up to high once the gun is up to temp. But I heat the chips for about 8 to 15 seconds and then I can either take my pliers or my, my, my chisel or a screwdriver and I can guide them off or I can take and I can shake them off. The whole, the whole stick of RAM will get really hot. So the other thing I do is I keep the, the long nose pliers around and I just hold on to the, to, the, to the RAM. So as I'm heating it, I'll tap them off and then I, I don't have to touch the stick because the stick is, is gonna get really hot as you're working with it. And even with the gloves on, you'll feel the heat through the gloves. Um, so it's just easier to just know in advance that you grab it with pliers and heat them off and then they're done. This isn't a perfect example right now because the gold fingers are still on. If I were to use the heat gun and get the solder fluid, I would run the risk of the solder crossing over and getting onto my, my gold fingers here. So step one, no matter what style of RAM, I clip the fingers. Step two, Depends on what kind of RAM. If it's BGA, I heat it up. And if it's um, SD RAM or DDR, the old style with the, with, the, with the legs, then I use my chisel and I pry them off. Um, I, I slice one side and then I can just peel them off really easily. Um, that's how I process RAM. Um, there's three components that are valuable in review. There's three components. The fingers, which are not as valuable as the IC chips, and the IC chips have different values based on whether they have legs on the outside or if they're BGAs underneath. The third thing I look for is a board that has gold pins that are out in the middle of the board, and I'll process that last. The last thing I wanted to say was I like to have a metal surface to work on because the solder drips off and it sticks to everything. And on a metal surface like this, I can just peel it off. And if there's any tin or silver in it, you know, it can be processed. If there's lead, whatever. The other reason why I like having this nice metal surface is it protects the workbench. I use this one specifically because it has this, this cavity of air underneath it. It's raised up on all sides. So as I'm working with the heat gun and this surface gets hot, then it's got this area underneath to buffer and not heat up my desk. Not that the desk is high quality, just don't wanna ruin something for no reason. So I have this plate, it's an old Dell tower side panel. And as I'm working, it allows me to make a mess out of it, get it really hot and it doesn't care. So, in conclusion, um, that's just how I remove the chips and the fingers from RAM. Um, I have yet to actually process them myself for, for the gold recovery, um, but 
but you can sell these if you're not going to process the the chips yourself um, you can sell them on eBay people happily buy these uh, the prices vary based on how much you have as buyers on eBay um, know about how much gold to expect from certain amount of weight uh, quantities um, of different types of chips like let's say you had one kilogram of BGAs they would sell for this much because people know that they can get X amount of gold out of it. Whereas if you had one kilogram of a different style chip, then they know, the buyers know, if they do their own processing, they know about how much to expect as a return. So they know how much they can spend. If you mix your chips, you make it very hard for people to predict and you'll probably get less buyers interested because they don't wanna invest more than it's worth and they don't know how much um, to expect as their yield uh, when they do their refining. So the best practice to get the most out of your, of your chips would be keep them separated. Um, keep your BGAs combined, keep your, your uh, surface mount with the legs on the outside, um, keep them combined. Um, and even still, I don't mix my RAM surface mount chips with other motherboard surface mount chips because a lot of those surface mount chips may or may not have gold or copper. Whereas RAM, is, it does. RAM will have gold. So thanks for watching. Um, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.